Alex, thank you for being on here with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me. Now, let's catch up some. We've, you've been, this might be your third or fourth time being recorded. I can't yeah. remember. I'm always trying to get you on video. <laughs> well, it's kind of you to invite me. I appreciate it. It's yeah. nice to keep having me back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just for several reasons. And this, this one right now is about leadership. Uh, look, we're, we're all searching for something a little bit different. Uh, you mm -hmm. see the business world going, business owners are going, it's about leadership. People working there say it's about leadership. So I'm going to ask you questions about leadership. Um, and I'm going to ask you questions, but we're going to go a little bit back and forth because you come up from martial arts and a business. I come at it from a business. So we're going to kind of blend the two. Now, Alex, you are a fifth degree black belt now, right? Yep. Yep. Correct. Congratulations. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was about a, about a year ago. And so that was that was a pretty big deal for me. So I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and a dad. Congratulations. Yeah, and a dad. That's also a pretty big deal. Carson's uh, three months, three months old. Yeah, so. that's another journey in leadership. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a different one because I'm real good with kids teaching kids karate, but babies and and kids karate are a little different. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Now you also you were awarded, and if I didn't point this out, you would not mention it. You were a business owner, but you sold part of your business, but you, you were awarded like small business owner of the year, how yeah. many years in a row or how many years? Um, we, that's a, a good question. So, uh, chamber, the chamber of commerce, we got small business of the year. I definitely know it off the top of my head. I don't know the article's too far away. Um, <laughs> But then we also received uh, Best Martial Arts Studio um, from kind of the, uh, the, the newspaper media company in, in town for, I'm going to say, probably eight years in a row, something like that. So that's very kind. <laughs> it's very kind of them. Years and we do have row. quite a few martial arts studios as well. It's not like we're the only one or anything like that. We're in a college town and, and, and martial arts is... Do, doing well here so that's that's very kind i appreciate you bringing it up i would think stillwater oklahoma there's a fair amount of <laughs> yeah we, we, yeah there's um you know now that we're you know in omicron we've been in the pandemic for like two years the numbers unfortunately for martial arts schools aren't aren't as great uh because it's a close contact sport and um but pre-pandemic we had i think nine nine martial arts schools in town mm. in a town of 50,000 people. And mm. so that's, that's a bit of saturation in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and so there's some, there's some, you know, good competition out there, but the numbers have thinned a little bit, which, you know, is good for business, but is, is it's unfortunate. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I've had the, ex I've had, I've been fortunate to experience some of your martial in a small degree i just would stop in and say hello and learn a little that's bit kind of that's kind of you. leadership's quite a broad topic and what we're going to do is do you know i'm going to do several on this platform and hopefully i can convince you to do one or two because i i i've seen some things that stood out so we're going to talk about example leadership setting the example i think that's key yeah it is uh, I'm going to kind of refresh your memory a bit about some things you've said to me. <laughs> okay, let's well, good. I'm going to need it. <laughs> okay, so in terms of setting the example from a leadership standpoint, martial arts is a very active, uh, obviously very active. Uh, there's a lot of physical requirements from the students. And at one point you were telling me that when you're asking a student to do a certain number of push-ups or a certain exercise or whatever requirement was, you were telling me what you would do from a leadership perspective. Can you describe that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, a really good example of that would be our uh, fourth degree black belt test. So we have a, a, for those who are not initiated in martial arts, once you get your black belt, there's varying degrees after that. And you kind of work your way up because there's no more belt colors. And um, so fourth degree is, is, is a really big one. Um, that's a, a just from the martial arts perspective. And so when when we, you know, I'm a fifth degree black belt now, so I can officially promote people to a fourth degree black belt. And um, I have one fourth degree black belt and I'm, I'm hopefully going to have two more here in, in a year or so. And um, 
it, it, it's, it's pretty important for me when they're going through their test that I have either done that personally mm -hmm. or done it to the nth degree. So for instance, my fourth degree black belt test, I'm what's considered an orphan instructor, meaning that I don't have, normally in a traditional martial arts relationship, it's you and then you get your instructor and your instructor says, do this and you say, okay, it sounds great. The issue is my instructor is no longer there. And, uh -huh. and it ha hasn't been for a very long time. And so it kind of leaves you, I think I was maybe a second or third degree black belt at the time. And it kind of leaves you with a uh, lack of, uh, there's no, no path or road, the easily accessible path or road. And so I joined a program called the uh, ultimate black belt test. And kind of the idea there is uh, it's Tom Callis's uh, project who's a millionth degree black belt and very well renowned and, and industry icon. Uh, but the idea is, um, you know, he's already up here. So there's a, a level of uh, quality to it automatically. Nobody can really say, Oh, you're, you're paying for your belt or anything like that because yeah. all of the requirements and the test is all public. So there's videos and, and all this stuff that's going on. And, so my fourth degree black belt test ended up being a huge year long journey that everybody can find if you're interested in finding it. Um, and it's, it, it's kind of beyond reproach is the idea. So um, it's like, well, nobody can, how many people's fourth degree black belt test was harder than mine. And so the idea is that nobody, even though I don't have an instructor, they can't say, you know, oh, yeah, Alex just, uh, you know, paid some money, he got his belt, no big deal. It's like, no, he did all this stuff, and you can't really deny that. And so kind of taking that back is a normal 4-3 test isn't that extreme. I mean, it, it's hard, it's very challenging. It is a long process, but it might not be as extreme as mine was. And so the important part for me is that when I tell these guys, like, hey, I need you to do 10,000 push-ups, that sounds extreme, and it is extreme. But when I did 10,000 push-ups or more than that, uh, no, sorry, I gave you the wrong numbers. Well, I have them do 2,500 push-ups. And when they go, man, that's a lot. I can say, you know, I totally feel you. I understand when I was doing my fourth degree black belt test, I had to do 10,000. You know, so I'm not, I'm not yeah. asking anyone to do something that I haven't already done or wouldn't do. Because there are situations where as a leader, you might need something done um, and maybe you haven't specifically run a booth at that fair before or something like that you know but i'm also i'm willing to it's just the position is i have this other thing or i'm doing this now or i'm teaching classes now i'm in a different position but i'm not asking something of somebody that i i, I wouldn't do myself if i was in that position so in terms of setting the example you have done at least what you're asking them at to least do. at least exactly and that's that's kind of the the point it's uh, we, we kind of have a, I don't know what you'd call it, but I try and, you know, our receptionist takes the, the trash out at the end of the night, just because I'm the owner doesn't mean I'm too good to take the trash out. Now, is she going to take the trash out 99% of the time? Yes, that's her job. That's what she's getting paid for. But if she's not there, I'm not like, well, you know, you know, I'm the owner. So yeah, like, no, I can take the trash out. It's fine. Like, it's not going to be a big deal. You know, I still have my responsibilities that I need to do, and that's more important for me. But at the same time, like, I can cover, I can fill in. So one one thing I like about um, our studio and Enid's family martial arts, and and that's good from a marketing perspective because we're looking for families. Uh -huh. But at the same time, we treat each other like a family, our students and our employees. And so if somebody's sick, we're all trying to take a little bit of that person's job for that day it can be a little bit inconvenient because it's like, Oh, I already have my stuff to do, but if we all pitch in, then it kind of helps everybody together. If that makes sense. So if I'm out, I can expect that everyone's going to pitch in a little bit and try and cover at least the immediate needs that I would have taken care of that day. And so that's, I mean, that's how we would, we would treat each other in a family as well. If my wife can't do this because she's doing that. It's like, well, you know, maybe she did, maybe that's normally her job. Maybe she normally vacuums or something like that. Uh, I'm staying at home dadding at this point in time. So I'm the one doing all the vacuuming, but let's say yeah. I'm out, you know, she would, she would, you know, take care of that if it was an immediate need or, you know, something like that. So just kind of uh, service-based leadership, I think is. Oh, that's, 
how the idea there. That's terrific. I want to ask you questions along those lines. Mm -hmm. I, I think, and you described also, I, I had a client the other day that was saying, I want my company to look like this. And what they didn't realize is they wanted to look something different than what they were demonstrating. And it, sometimes it's hard to see that as a leader. Okay. If you want them to serve yeah. the community and be involved in the community, if you say that you want that and then you're not, then there's a chance if you, you're not setting the right example of what you want. I totally agree. I totally agree. I think that's the case in a lot of situations. And it's tough, I think, as the person in that situation, it's maybe tough for you to see that you're not acting the way that you want the other people to act. And, and even from a new parent's perspective, um, like I said, uh, my son Carson is three months old now, but I think, you know, in my limited parenting experience, I think if I want him to act a certain way, it's important that I model that. So if uh -huh. I, if I am hoping that he's polite, well, I can't get that by saying whatever, doing whatever I want all the time. You know, it's like, oh, I yeah. need to set that example because I'm essentially his teacher in how life works. And so if I am modeling that, whether it's for him or for employees or just somebody that I'm in charge of, or even honestly, just even teamwork peers. Like if, if we're going to work in a group and I want everyone to be nice to each other, well, I can't start by lecturing everybody about hey, how you need to be nice to each other. I just need to be nice, be nice. And polite and helpful and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and just modeling that behavior. Which you just led me right into my next question. I want to ask you, I, I think that part of it, part of your test was, there's a gratitude part of it. Mm -hmm. If I recall, you can correct me if I'm, rem if I'm remembering this wrong, but I think part of your test was gratitude and that's a requirement you have. And right. you sent out, you personally sent out, I forgot the number of cards, right? But so you uh, tell your students in order to get your next belt, flat belt, you got to do acts of gratitude. Yes. What are they? And you did. Yes. So, so, uh, we have we have two different portions. We have acts of kindness and we have gratitude. And and for the acts of kindness, it's kind of again that modeling behavior where it's it doesn't have to be something big, you know. And 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 for certain people, you do acts of kindness all day long and you never even think about it. And that's just how uh -huh. you you learned growing up. Um, but for some people, it could be more challenging where they didn't maybe have that same model. The acts of gratitude was a was a really big one for me, and that was pretty challenging. And I still have my students do this. Um, they have to send out five letters of gratitude, um, and uh, it can be it doesn't have to be crazy long or anything like that. It could be a postcard, it could be you know something. But thinking of somebody in your life that that you're grateful for, or if you're not, that you should be, and and letting them know that. Like how many people do you know that you may never see them again or something happens and and you wish, man, I, you know, it would wouldn't have been great if they understood the impact they had on my life. That teacher in school that you're probably never gonna see again, things like that. And I, I know that I have those people. And uh for my test, you know, like I said, I try and do at least so for my test, I had to do a hundred letters of gratitude, which was a challenge because I was like, do I know a hundred people? <laughs> um, <laughs> and it turns out the answer is yes, but um, you just start with the people closest to you, my mom, dad, grandparents, you know, friends. And, and, and for me, who's a generally, you know, I'm friendly, but I'm a little bit closed off. I think I'm not telling my friends like, Hey man, I love you, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's, it's kind of, it's kind of weird and it's kind of challenging to write. And, and, and for me, I, I set myself kind of a minimum limit of a full page. So it's a note piece of notebook paper, a full page <clears throat> where it's like, you know, here's what I'm doing. I'm grateful for you. And here's why all the things that, that you've helped me, whether you understand it or not, this has been a huge impact on me. And I just really appreciate that. And sending those out to friends. And I sent a lot out to uh, students of mine, former students, current students that have really had an impact on my life. And I got to the 80 or 90 mark. And I was like, you know, I'm, I can write more to just people, you know, I can come up with something, but you know, it's not quite as heartfelt as some of these other ones. And so 
<clears throat> I was talking to uh, Tom Kellis, who's the uh, the leader of my test, and he's like, "Well, surely there's a lot of people that um, you you would like to show gratitude to that you've never even met." And that opened a whole new thing in my mind, where I'm like, "Wow, wow you know, I'm really appreciative to uh, the author of this book because it really changed my perspective." And I'm really appreciative to this speaker that I've, I've watched on YouTube over and over again, and I've learned a lot from, they don't know I exist, but I am incredibly grateful for them. What about, um, I've, I've had some friends who've, who've passed away that I'm incredibly grateful for. And obviously the letter for those situations, they may or may not get them in, the, in case of somebody passing away, obviously they're not going to get the letter. I did send out actual physical letters to some of these speakers and people that have authors, people that have impacted my life and whether or not I get a response really isn't even the point uh -huh. uh, because the exercise kind of changes from letting somebody know how grateful I am for them to kind of understanding my own uh, emotional connections with, with being grateful and, and I guess being more intentional as well um, because I probably would have never never thought like, man, you know, I'm really grateful for this person because this, this, and this. And it just helped me think a little bit deeper and a little bit more um, on pur purposeful. Yeah. That makes sense. No, oh, it sure does. Sure does. We went into several topics. That was, that was terrific. Um, I'm going to do, well, I just, when Thank I say you. it's terrific is good thing I'm recording it because I'm going to do more of that. And you, said, you said something about the expectations of what you get back. And you said mm -hmm. something about without, you said it better without expectations. It doesn't really matter what you get back. It's the expression of it. Yes. Um, and you said service-based leadership. And uh, so I want to, I want to kind of ask you if we're getting this, because the example I hear you describing, and I believe this is any business is service-based leadership. And tell me if I'm missing anything. One, you're, you're working harder. You're working as hard as, as anybody in your leadership group. You've already done it. Two, there's gratitude involved in it. Three, it's set up like a family. So you're going to do anything that's needed there. Uh, so the example that you're setting, is there anything in there, Alex, as we close this out and you, you've done a wonderful job with this is there anything in there that's lacking as a leadership person that you think an example should be set if you're saying my fourth degree is ought to see this have we missed anything i mean i, th I think you hit the nail on the head um and 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 everybody's in <clears throat> you know everybody has their own situation so for instance i had a um, an emergency open heart surgery i know that you know about but maybe not all of our listeners have and so because of that, I've had uh, some complications, some issues, things like that. And so it's ironic. I own a martial arts studio, but I actually cannot get punched or kicked too hard. And so <clears throat> when it comes to that service-based leadership, uh, I just want to make sure that it's understood that just because, say, I can't teach a specific class anymore, it's not unreasonable for me to think, or for me to expect somebody else to teach that class. Um, but, but, you know, it kind of comes back to like, oh, well, you're not doing it. Correct. But I'm willing to. And, oh. and, and the fact that I am, am um, open and the fact that everyone understands that given the opportunity, I would be able to, I would be happy to, I'd be happy to do my part. Um, that I think that's pretty important because say, say you're the owner of a business and maybe you're at the, the, the portion of the business where you've, you've done it for a long time and maybe you're starting to put some other people in between you and daily operations. I don't think that makes you a bad leader. Mm -hmm. You, you've been there, you've done that, you're willing to, you, 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 you know, you want to help but you may have some, some different priorities. You can't be there all the time. You have some other responsibilities. The fact that, that you are there, you're trying to help when you're able to, and that those other people in between are taking over some of those responsibilities, um, I think is, is more than acceptable because not everybody can be in the daily grind. Not everybody wants to be in the daily grind, 
every single day, but you can still be a good leader without, uh, you know, doing every aspect of the job all the time. It is reasonable to pay somebody else to do those, those roles. Um, but the fact that it's not, I'm your boss, do what I say. Um, you know, it's not authoritarian. It's, it's, uh, influence, uh, versus like command, you know, if that makes sense. It does. And I want to mention, I want to hang on that point for, for a minute too, because we're in the process of expanding and, and doing website development. So what I struggle with, I know biz, many business owners do, is I know how to do that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. not necessarily my skill set. Yes. The, the guy that helps me with that. So I will go, okay, I'm just getting in the way at one point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. That's a, that's a great point. It is okay to hire some like for martial arts, but it's okay for me to hire somebody to do marketing for me. Yeah. That is okay. It doesn't need to be that I know everything about it and I can do it. That is okay. It's, I think that's actually a stronger team when, okay, I've got these strengths and you've got these strengths, you know, we normally have these weaknesses, but together we really kind of fill it out. The, I think the thing there is just treating that person like you would want to be treated, you know, just, you know, I might not understand the website design or the marketing or something like that. And so I shouldn't just kind of hammer on them for it's not done yet. It's not perfect. And it's, you know, it's like, help me understand. And, and maybe there is a way I can help you. And, and, you know, it's just, unfortunately, <laughs> I feel like being reasonable is kind of hard for, uh, for, for some, some situations like that. And, and we just really want to be like understanding and reasonable. And like, how would you want to be treated in that situation? You might not have the skill set, but you know, how would you like, how would you want your boss to be talking to you? You know, I just got my next topic for a video and that is <laughs> lead by asking questions. Mm. Because I like that. I think that's that's I think that's good. It's another influence versus, I guess, authority kind of a situation. Yeah, um, because with the website, why is this done? And oh, I noticed this wasn't done. How, how can I help you with that? Or what challenges are you facing? Or, you know, and that that's going to come up with a much more uh, effective conversation. Yeah, I like, um to circle back up where you started it with this taking the trash out and doing things and gratitude is, Hey, why, why was this not done? Let's talk this through, or can I help you with something or what can I help you with? It's a great. And that's the example of service-based leadership that you referenced is asking yeah. questions on how you can help. And Alex, thank you. Once again, I always have, high expectations of our conversations together and it always goes even further than I thought. So I appreciate the time. And well, congratulations. Thank you for having me. It's, it's always happened? a great time. I appreciate, I appreciate you inviting me on. It's always a great time. Yeah. Well, um, when we get off of here, I'm hopefully I can sell you on being on here again. So just, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you can. We'll see, but thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.